Okay, good day and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be focusing on the box and whisker or box and whisker plot. We're going to look at a couple of things to do with it and we're also going to look at a worked example of how it might be applied in a question for you. Okay, so let's get started. Start off with box and whisker plots are used to represent the quartiles and some other information in an easy way to understand. All right, so you have to have worked out your quartiles already or have been given your quartiles in order to plot one of these. Okay, two other uh, data points that we put in or two pieces of information that we put in are our lowest and our highest value. This broadens the whole context of everything so that we can look at the big picture. All right, another advantage of box and whisker plots is that we can compare two box and whisker plots with each other graphically and that gives you a better picture of things. So what does one look like? Well, there's an example of one there for you. You'll see that you've got a box in the middle, all right, that encompasses Q1 through to Q3 with a line in the middle for Q2 and two lines coming off on the side that look like whiskers, so that's why they call them whiskers. So, specifically, in general, you're going to be given a box and whisker plot or you're going to have to draw one. There's always some sort of scale that you need to work with first, all right, so you'll see I've got my scale at the bottom, and then just to explain what your various parts are, the first dot there, or the first line, is your lowest value, all right? Then moving over, you've got your lower quartile, then you have your median in the middle, which is Q2, your upper quartile, and your highest value, okay? So that we can see how all of this data is spread out there. Now, a very important thing to notice is, okay, between the lowest and the highest value, that is 100% of your data. All of your information is encompassed in there. Then, we know that quartiles are set out at 25%, 50%, and 75%. So that means that everything below your lower quartile is your first 25% uh, of your data, okay, your 25th percentile, the first quarter of your data. Your median covers 50% of the data and your upper quartile covers up to 75% and anything above that is your top 25% of your data. In between your lower quartile and your upper quartile, you will have a 50% of your data, okay, so that Half your information is in the middle there, between your lower and your upper quartile, and 50% of the data is below and above. Okay, that gives you quite a good sort of sign of your spread of data as well, especially if you're considering your interquartile range. Now, just to kick it up a little bit of a notch, we can also say that our data is skewed to the left, the right, or symmetrical, which is not at all. The symmetrical data in a mathematical point of view, means that it would match a bell curve. It's perfectly distributed. It's exactly what you would expect in the perfect situations. So if we look at our three things here, if our median is closer to the third quartile, it's skewed to the left, right? If the median is dead center, then we know that it's not skewed. And if the median is closer to the first quartile, it's said to be skewed right. So You'll notice that the size of the box between Q2 and the other two quartiles determines which one this is. All right. The bigger box on the left makes it left skewed. The bigger box on the right makes it right skewed. Okay. So hopefully you won't get mixed up between those two types of things there. Okay. Now we're going to look at an example that came from a sort of exam type question where we're going to look at comparing the data, etc., and some of the information that we can get from this. It's a higher level order question. So let's move on to that example. Okay, so on to our example. I'm going to look at this uh, example over here, where they said the following data is from hostels that Dustin and Suzanne stayed at during their visit in Budapest. Obviously, this is part of a, a longer question here. All right, we've got two box and whisker plots given to us along here, along with our scale. This is for a private room and this is for dorm rooms. Okay, so the box and whisker plots show the age of clients depending on their choice of rooms. A private room sleeps a maximum of two people, a dorm sleeps a maximum of eight people. 
Okay, and you'll see the private rooms uh, start here at 21 and go up to 39, and the dorm rooms start at 18 and go up to 30. All right, so using the above data, calculate the interquartile range for the dorm rooms, the interquartile range for the private rooms, and the difference between the two interquartile values. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So number one, we're looking at A, I want the interquartile range for a dorm. Okay, so as I said, I need to look at my quartiles now because they're asking for interquartile range. So the dorm rooms, quartile one is 20 and quartile two, sorry, quartile two is 24, quartile three is 28. So we're looking at the difference between Q3 and Q1. So 28 minus 20, sorry, very simple. That's gonna give me eight there, okay. The next one, they ask us for the interquartile range for private, all right. So looking at these two, my private room, it starts, it ends up at 35. Okay, that's my Q3. My Q1, if I line this up, is at 22. So that, if we subtract the two, gives me an interquartile range of 13. And lastly, the difference between the two interquartile values. All right, so I'm gonna take the 12, sorry, not 12, the 13 minus the eight, so that'll give us a difference in our interquartiles of five, all right? What do you realize from these two, if you wanted to take it a little bit further, is that a private room has a much larger variety or variation in who would stay there as opposed to our dorms, okay? So dorms are a lot more sensitive to ages, etc. okay? 50% of the people, there's an age range of eight here, with 50% in private, uh, the age range is 13, which is a lot more. Okay, let's look at number two now. So what we have here, we've been asked, which type of room is more popular with older clients? Motivate your answer by referring to the quartiles. Okay, so if we take a look here at these two things, Right. First off, where do we have the older people? Where do we have the younger people? So older people are using the private rooms. Okay. Now, where or how are we going to go and motivate motivate that properly? Okay. Well, you'll see that more than twenty five percent of the dorm rooms are younger than the youngest people in the private rooms. In the same way, here, we could also compare here, which is nice and neat, that 75% of the dorm rooms are younger than 28, whereas 50% of the private rooms are younger than 28 and over the age of 28. Okay, so I'd make some reference to that. So. We could go and say that, um, and we have to look at a mathematical point of view. So the private room Q2 is equal to 28, all right? The dorm room, okay, well dorm room Q3 equals 28. All right, that is 50%, that is 75%. So, 75% <clears throat> of the dorm rooms, clients are younger than 50% of private room 
your clients. Day four, the private rooms have all the clients. Okay, the reason why I put these numbers in here, it's a three mark question. The justification is probably only going to be about one mark and they're going to look for two uh, numbers there because they did ask us to refer to the quartiles. So I've, I've found two quartiles that are exactly the same, all right, and that's probably the easiest thing for us to use there. Yeah, the last one. 120 clients stayed in the private rooms. Calculate the number of clients who were 33 and older. Okay, so if I get my ruler here and I look for 33, there's 32, there's 33. Okay, that is my Q3 for private rooms, which we know is 75%. All right, so with question three, we know that, or well, they want to know how many were older than the uh, than that, so I can just find 25% of 120, which gives me 40 people, okay, because that 25% is over Q3, okay, that's over Q3, and Q3 equals 33 years, okay, so, all right, so just to sum it up, box and whisker plot is a graphical representation of your quartiles along with the highest and your lowest values, all right? And what is important is that all that information that you're given, you can work out things like your range and your interquartile range, and you can talk about how evenly distributed the information is, which one you trust more. And as you saw in the example, how we can compare different data and make uh, various assumptions from it and so on. All right, so hopefully that's helpful and uh, good luck in the future.